We decided to do the IBH project um, mainly because we have a large number of patients who um, seek their primary mental health care in our emergency room. And knowing that that is not the best way to enter the system or to have continued uh, mental health care, IBH seemed like a really amazing opportunity to work with some best practices to um, have an agency help lead us in work that was being done around the state in similar sized hospitals and health systems as well as to connect us with our community partners so that we were offering our patients and our families in this community the best service that was available. A lot of times what we were finding was the services are here, they're just not being accessed. Oftentimes, individual providers almost feel like an island. Unless they are out working with organizations, working with committees such as IBH, not learning about other organizations, you don't know what other resources are out there. It's really our job to solve this problem. It's our community's job. By getting all of the people together at the table, including consumers, including advocates, including the community, I think we're able to see that there is a lot more here than we thought. We fast forwarded to our community meeting. We got tons of community partners in the room. The response that we got to the invitation for this project was overwhelming. This community wants to be better. This community really wants to do things around mental health because we see it as a priority. We know that we are in a place that is uh, hard to access care. We know that we can do a better job. And we have some really passionate and well-versed individuals in this community. So we wanted to look at um, co better coordination of care, getting some networking opportunities for the community, and looking at continuity of care. The way we measured that was uh, we started to look at the utilization of our emergency room for that care coordination piece. Who was coming to our ER to receive their primary mental health care? So a lot of times if we have a patient who's struggling with chronic illness or uh, chronic illness and mental health, they'll end up on one of what we call our care teams at First Light. So it's really coordinated care through the health system. Partnering with them to find their goals, to you know understand what it is that they are seeking so that we can do a better job of um, keeping them connected to that resource so they don't just go away. We maybe will connect them with, say, our community connector, Alina, or maybe they have a crisis service referral, but ultimately if they're on our care teams, we don't lose track of them. And because that patient has built trust with those collaboratives or those different players in their mental health journey, um, I think they're more willing to access services quickly. We in mental health are very siloed and one of the reasons c can potentially be because we're all working with some of the same people in different capacities, but not figuring out those pathways to speak with each other. Communication, communication, communication. I think the fact that the individuals representing different organizations get together, you become aware of what's going on. When you have that communication, different entities talk to each other, then that does nothing but facilitate positive outcomes for the individual being served. The relationship with crisis services is very helpful and very needed in this community, as they always have been, um, because they kind of can pick up where we left off. You know, I'm there seeing the patient in the ER, but that's where that visit ends, is in the ER. It has been really great to have a relationship with the other providers because you just feel comfortable. I think before I had the relationship, I didn't really feel like I could reach out to them. And now that I know them, I've met them, I feel totally comfortable just even writing them an email, asking them questions. We did some research on why people ended up not going to their visits. A lot of times it was kind of found that mental health providers around here are booked out a long ways. So um, getting people in as soon as we're able to and maybe making more follow-ups before their appointment and kind of keeping that conversation going. Because of our work together in IBH, we're able to hire a sort of care connector. So Alina is able to spend a little bit more time without the rule constraints of so many visits or you know maybe she can spend a more intensive week just helping a patient get lined up the things that they feel like they need to be successful. My role as a care connector is to work with clients and patients that are coming out of Recovering Hope Treatment Facility, coming out of the ER or uh, inpatient stay um, in the hospital, or coming out of jail, uh, and then transitioning them back into the community to 
connect them with services or to get them back to their doctor's appointments or to set them up with maybe some therapy services, maybe even financial services or housing. So that's, that's the goal in me working with clients is to just help them find their way. They'll feel more supported with, and they'll have the support that they may not have, and they'll be able to feel more powerful in their own community. They'll be able to feel like they're independent and they can do things on their own. One of the challenges is we can offer referrals all day long that we think make sense, but if we don't talk to our patients about what they think makes sense, or they aren't handling the things they need to do first, second, third, um, we'll always fail at that final goal of getting a more comprehensive picture. One of the reasons people don't access services is because there's a huge stigma around saying, I have issues of depression, mental health, substance use. That stigma can result in someone not getting services, not acknowledging what's going on with him or her, and as a result, they uh, fail to begin to treat what's getting in the way of a good, happy life for them. One of the first things I remember them working through was, it was the Make It Okay campaign. So that group really tasked themselves with making it okay and that campaign is a really well run, very organized approach. You can't say enough about um, boiling down all of the concerns of all of the people into a couple strong um, objectives and then doing some data collection and measurement to see if you're really hitting those targets or not. Data is an amazing way to measure any kind of progress or any interventions that you put into place. Data in healthcare is becoming easier to get and turn into meaningful data. We still meet on a regular basis, um, three plus years into this project, and have continued to form more collaboratives, projects to work on together, and just overall better working relationships. What I would tell other hospitals starting this work is that the most important things are to get your community partners at a table, get your leadership at the same table, and then allow the work to be led by the needs of that group, especially consumers and your community. Um, to never come to the table with the expectation that you already know how to make this, you know, these challenges better, but that the solutions really lie within many different facets.